So Dr. Luden said that she couldn't manage the pain. Um, she didn't want to, to, I don't recall exactly what she said, but I needed to be established care with a primary care provider before they could do that. And that made perfect sense to me. Um, she said, we'll get you in to see some, you know, a primary care provider uh, up front and then you can establish your care there. Uh, and then they can, you know, go over your history. And and I asked her to go ahead and send for Boone's records. And I asked, I recorded myself asking the receptionist to send, nobody would send for Boone's records. That they desperately wanted an ultrasound and, and ordered IV fluids. And why they wrote for the tramadol for the pain in the first place. And nor, nor would they send for Arizona's records. So I go out to reception. They make an appointment with Dr. Chu, he was apparently a resident. Uh, he asked me mostly questions about my autism and my savant syndrome. And I went over my medication with him. I said I did pill counts with my previous providers until we find out what is causing all this bleeding and this severe pain that has me so crippled you could see the pain in my face. Um, you know, I needed a refill so I could keep working to pay for whatever care they wanted. Now, mind you, I paid $50 for the visit on July 14th and was billed another $150. The same with the follow-up to establish care. The first visit on the 14th with Luden was an emergency to, to deal with the bleeding. But then she writes, tries to refer me to pelvic floor as if a pelvic floor doctor who deals with uh, constipation has anything to do with bleeding. I believe it's called kickbacks fraud, uh, especially since they falsified their medical records. So I go in, I record uh, Dr. Chu basically not going over the bleeding, the pain pattern. I told him the pain was in my back, down my crotch, down the tops of my legs, and uh, that I was bleeding very heavily. They got me in immediately. I got there an hour before the appointment time and they got me back immediately. So I was back in the physician's exam room 45 minutes before my appointment time was even up. I stopped the recording and then press record again for when the supervisor comes in because I was asking for a pain medication. Never mind, they didn't ask me, you know, to send, they didn't, I kept trying to get them to send for records. They didn't want to, I had the, the pills right there. I'd only used four out of the 20 that the doctor had prescribed to me five days earlier, six days earlier, um, and did pill counts with my previous provider in Arizona. They didn't want none of that. She comes in there, rude, full of attitude. It's all about the drugs. It's all about, well, my, I'm taking my attentive all wrong, and I mean, just hateful as hell. Ends up screaming in my face. Um... I'm going, why aren't you doing an exam? Why aren't you doing an evaluation? This is costing me $200, $50 out of pocket. That's a social problem, basically, is what she's asserting. Uh, she writes for 30 pills, and I said, that's a five-day supply. She says, I'm not writing for it for six a day. Um, I said, I can't work, I can't function with this pain at three a day, and I had no intentions of taking more than what she wrote for. And my, my medication was locked up at Lois Bryant House, so I couldn't take more than three a day. And when you're having to be out for 12 hours a day, going to work for five hours, setting as a political fundraiser, having to think through a nine-point exam with all this horrible pain and bleeding, um, I had no problem with the number. It was the fact that she wasn't writing for it because I had no control. Over, and I wouldn't have taken six a day if she didn't write for six a day. It was for her writing for an amount that I could I could continue working so that I could pay for whatever it was I needed, whatever health care I needed. Now, this is $400 now I'm being billed. Nobody's done an evaluation, a proper evaluation of this bleeding. She doesn't ask a single diagnostic question. She on audio refuses to send for records because as she stated she didn't she, I didn't have enough time she says you only get 20 to 30 minutes I've been in there 12. none of the reasons were valid and you can actually hear in her voice she's searching for answers 
They're trying to keep you coming back, coming back, refer you over here, refer you over there, racking up that bill and not dealing with an emergent situation that's keeping me from working and constant bleeding where I needed emergency IV fluids, but they refused to send for the records to establish that. And I recorded an interview I did with Boone's medical, medical record staff stating that nobody ever sent for those records until November of 2014. So apparently Dr. Gabari falsified her record saying that she tried to send me to an ultrasound and an OBGYN and that's not what's on the audio. What's on the audio is she's screaming in my face, screaming, screaming, screaming. I hold my phone up to see that she's being recorded doing all the screaming, refusing to send for records, refusing to ask diagnostic questions, refuse to do a proper exam. All she's just, well, you take, you know, and just this really abusive crap. She, the look of horror on her face, she gets up, do you want the prescription or not? And then almost passes out walking out of the exam room because now she's about to be held accountable for her actions. I'm not unable to work and, and really perform my job the way I need to because I'm in so much pain and I'm going, I need to find out what's causing all this bleeding. I've been gaslighted twice by two different MU doctors at Green Meadows, which is now South Providence. I go back into the ER because I want to know what's causing all this pain. The pain medicine was really barely touching this pain. Dr. Scott does an emergency pelvic and based on that pelvic he ordered an emergency ultrasound. That ultrasound revealed a three centimeter uterine tumor in a, I have a bicornuate uterus, I have two very small little compartments. The same doctor that administered the fluids was was on again that day. I recorded, what are you doing back here? I said, I just recorded two doctors at the university refusing to order an ultrasound, refusing to do a proper evaluation and tried to send me to a pelvic floor clinic for all this bleeding after you just gave me fluids. Dr. Scott saw that tumor, but got recorded coming into the exam room and telling me that he saw nothing on the ultrasound, that I just had a couple of eggs stuck. However, when I looked at his medical records recently, he documented that he made a referral to Women's Health Associates and apparently didn't document that he lied to me and said that it didn't show anything. Well, what's on the audio recording is him saying, you got a couple eggs stuck, what are you gonna do? I said. If I can't keep working, I can't do anything. Um, I can't go see a doctor. I can't go see an OBGYN. The reason why he falsely documented that he made that referral is because by him, if he would have actually made that referral and told me the truth about what's on that, what was on that ultrasound, BJC Health Systems is a $4.3 billion tax exempt entity that pledges to the IRS that it forgives medical bills and is all about patient safety and patient care and all of this, their financial aid would have paid for that referral to Women's Health Associates. And by COVRA and MTALA, he was supposed to have made that referral anyway. He documented that he made that referral when he did not. Things get worse much worse. I end up losing my job. I'm going to stop the video here and then I'll pick up again because YouTube only allows uh, the videos to be so long.